Well, I can honestly say as someone that has now recorded probably six hours of these within the last 24 hours that I sure hope you are not watching all of these within the last 24 hours. In our E2 mechanism, if we think back to our process for running an E2, is that we need to break that carbon leaving group bond. That's a carbon leaving group bond simultaneous to the breaking of the carbon hydrogen bond. So there's our carbon hydrogen bond, there's our carbon leaving group bond. Those two bonds need to break at the exact same instant. Okay. Again, our overarching idea for what pieces are involved in this, we've got our substrate, our leaving group, the base solvent, and then we'll look at our complications and our regiochemistry. Okay. The substrate is where our leaving group is connected. The leaving group starts connected to our substrate and then conveniently is not shown in our product because I left it off. The base actually becomes an important thing for the E2. And we'll look at why it needs to be negative here in a second. And then the solvent, again, misleading, I would just leave the solvent off altogether. Okay, so let's break down our mechanism and click, whoops, it helps if you don't erase everything. Let's break down our mechanism and take a look at those individual pieces. So we said we need to break the leaving group bond. And at the exact same instant, I need to break that carbon hydrogen bond. So those electrons would need to go in to make the pi bond. And so we would end up with either of those options shown as products. So it all happens in one fell swoop, which is kind of nice and sweet. Okay, The substrate. Uh, actually, let's skip the substrate for the moment, and we'll move to actually the base, which you'll note isn't drawn in this mechanism, okay? At least not yet. In the case of the SNRE1, that carbon-hydrogen bond was broken using heat, okay? And we said it didn't really matter what broke it. In the E2, it needs to break at the same time as the leaving group bond is breaking. Said another way, the electrons in that carbon-hydrogen bond are being used to force the leaving group off the structure. Okay? Which means I have to break that carbon-hydrogen bond. This isn't just a let's vibrate it off and not worry about it. This is that bond must break to initiate this whole cascade of reactions. Which means something need to stabilize that H+. Plus. This is where the base comes into play. Okay, The base is what's going to drive the E2 mechanism. Okay? So if we're looking at our pieces again, what we need to be seeing here is a very strong base, which should ring some bells from the SN2, because in the SN2 we also needed a strong negatively charged thing. It was there a nucleophile, not a base though. Okay, so in the E2, we need a strong base because we have to remove that hydrogen. Okay, this step, starred step, becomes a critical step to get this reaction to work. Okay, which means when we go through to look at the rate law, our rate is going to be dependent on our rate constant, and now it's going to have a huge dependence on the base and the concentration of our substrate. Okay. So when we're looking at our rate law, it is again second order or bimolecular. That's where the two is coming from in E2, just like in SN2. It's a bimolecular reaction. It requires two species in that rate determining step. There's only one step here for the record. Okay, so we need to have that strong base. That's why it is exceptionally important that I'm showing it here, even generically, but I'm showing it as a negative, not as just a generic source of electrons okay substrate so how important well, let's actually even skip that the leaving group still needs to be good all right and now let's think about our energy diagram because this is going to help us evaluate our substrate we've got our reactant as we discussed with the e1 the product is likely to be higher in energy because of that presence of the pi bond Okay. So what we are looking at trying to do is to speed this reaction along. Okay. 
to speed the reaction, I need that activation energy to be smaller. That activation energy is dependent on the energy of the reactants. So if I make my base stronger, that can increase that. And it's also dependent on the transition state okay, and where the transition state is located. We keep kind of floating the concept out there of the Hammond postulate. Well, the Hammond postulate is again saying that the transition state is closest in energy to the intermediate that is closest to it. In this case, because it is an endothermic reaction, this is why it's important that it's endothermic, that transition state is closest in energy to the product. Why does that become important? If I drop the energy of the product, it's now going to have a significant impact on the transition state because the transition state energy is mostly dependent on the product. So when I'm looking at the substrate, I'm kind of considering what's happening with my product in the E2. If my product energy goes down, lower product energy, I get a faster E2 reaction. Okay. So what's going to make my product energy go down? Well, if it's more stable, i.e. we have our large groups on opposite sides of the pi bond, that's going to drop that energy significantly. What if I have more substituents? Turns out that drops the energy significantly too. So when we're looking at the substrate for an E2 reaction, we're tr really trying to focus on the most stable pi bond possible. Okay, And it turns out that we're going to get the most stable product if our starting substrate was more substituted. Tertiary is better than secondary, better than primary. Zeroary won't happen because there isn't a hydrogen at a beta position to do a reaction. Okay? So again, using our mechanism and our understanding of energy diagrams allows us to come to that conclusion. Without those aspects, we're really just shooting in the dark on this. Okay? So our most stable pi product or pi bond is going to come from a substrate that was more substituted. So we're going to favor, as I erase it, that was nice, we're going to favor our tertiary substrates over our secondary, over our primary, because they're going to result in more stable products, dropping the energy of the product, which, because it is an endothermic reaction, will also drop the transition state, speeding the reaction up. Okay? So that's a really subtle nuance behind it that is actually kind of cool, if you ask me, because you're dealing with all sorts of neat concepts like energy diagrams. Um, so we've addressed solvent, leaving group base. The solvent is, again, super misleading okay? um, because I need a strong base. So think of a strong base, hydroxide. How do I get hydroxide? I add sodium metal to water. So to get hydroxide, I'm in water, which is a protic solvent. Okay, So in your E2 mechanisms, you'll almost always see a protic solvent. Okay, You can sometimes see other ones, but the protic solvent is an artifact of the strong base that we're using, which then means if we try and make assumptions with our solvent, we usually end up making the wrong assumption and connection, and it's just misleading. So my recommendation is when it comes to solvent, if you think you're doing an E2, do not evaluate the solvent in your argument. Okay, Leave it alone. Um, heat is also usually seen here. So instead of solvent, you could look for heat. Heat is not a guarantee, but it does kind of help tip your hat or tip a hand that you're starting to do an elimination. When we think about the regiochemistry, the regiochemistry becomes a little bit more interesting because we just said we need the most stable product. Yes, we do. But, and of course there's a but, a lot of that is going to hinge on the mechanism that we're running. When we ran the SN2, we said we did backside attack. We're kind of going to be doing a backside attack too with the elimination. Okay. 
Um, and th that is going to become an exceptionally difficult thing to see. Our leaving group, let's put it on here as wedged, has to be opposite the hydrogen. Okay? And in fact, I'm going to have to spin this a little bit. has to be on the opposite side of the forming pi bond as the hydrogen because the electrons come in and attack in from the back side which is what's causing the leaving group to push out okay that orbital argument can be a very difficult one to understand and grasp so what you can do instead is think about the base the base is a giant source of electrons okay i want that base to be as far away from the leaving group as possible to run the elimination, okay? That as far away as humanly possible is going to force the alignment of the leaving group and the hydrogen into this complete opposite direction. Complete opposite direction is kind of a silly statement to make, and so we invent a new word to describe it. The regiochemistry is dependent on, green was a bad color to pick, is dependent on what is known as an anti-periplanar alignment. What are we talking about? If the leaving group is aimed up and the hydrogen is aimed down, they're, well, they're anti to each other, okay? Periplanar, meaning they're roughly on the same plane. If we look at an anti-Newman projection, I know everybody's favorite, but we're gonna have to see it here too, the leaving group and the hydrogen need to be in this anti-configuration. Periplanar is saying that they are effectively in the plane. Peri is just saying they don't have to be perfectly opposite each other. They just have to be damn close. Okay, so that, that's what peri means. Peri, I guess, means damn close. Okay. Uh, I apologize if that offended you, so I'll, I'll delete the, the damn. Um, man, I'm getting tired of this. Uh, the next thing that pops up, we get complications. The complications are this anti-periplanar aspect. Okay? Um, and because of this anti-periplanar alignment, sometimes you will end up forming a larger percentage of the cis than the trans. Why? because there wasn't a hydrogen that was available to make the trans, because there was no hydrogen that was anti-periplanar to it. In this particular reaction that we're looking at right now, what we would expect is the predominant trans, because the trans was more stable. But the cis could also form, because there is a hydrogen that would allow for that. Okay? So this anti-periplanar thing is going to pop up. It's dictates both the regiochemistry and kind of the complications. Um, one of the extra complications that can come from this is what is known as a Hoffman elimination. Uh, you are welcome to look at it. We will sort of gloss over it uh, when that complication appears, when we look at it a little bit later. Okay. So with that, we've got our E2. If we clear all that away, we can see all those little pieces. And there's our big summary for our E2 reaction. Thank you for sticking with it. I really appreciate it.